All right, uh, everyone, but thanks again for joining in. And welcome to the youth ministry class. Okay. All right. Uh, oh. Abney says, we see two videos of me. Is everyone else seeing two videos of me? Because I can see just one. Okay. And Kennedy's name also, I can see you, Pastor, on the video. So I was wondering. Oh, okay. Uh, it seems fine at my end, uh, Avni. I'm not sure. Oh, it's closed now, Pastor. Okay. Thank you. Okay, no problem. I guess I, uh, good morning and uh, welcome once again to the youth ministry session. I hope you all are doing awesome. I uh, hope your Sunday was good. I uh, got some good rest. Um, so yeah, good to see you all. Uh, right. Uh, let's get uh, let's get on with our course. Um, so in the previous sessions, we studied about or we learned about uh, uh, the challenges in youth ministry, and we kind of divided that into two different categories. Uh, we looked at the challenges faced by a youth uh, leader, be a youth pastor, uh, youth core team leader, whatever. And then the challenges faced by the youth themselves, right? That's what we, those are a couple of things we looked at in the previous session. Um, today, we'll look at, uh, we'll begin with chapter six, that is understanding youth culture of uh, this day and age. Okay, uh, chapter six, understanding uh, youth culture. All right, so uh, let's, I wanted to kind of start off by, uh, you know, sharing that, like, understanding different generations right so uh like up like i said in very briefly in the previous sessions that uh, this generation is going through a lot of changes they experience change uh at a very um it's, it's just very often right we uh it happens very often uh, and they are all just going through different kinds of changes in different aspects of their lives um very fast and so that's this generation. But so for us to just understand, uh, you know, this generation better, I thought it's better. It's it'd be better if you also understood what are the different generations in the last century uh, that's um, kind of seen changes and who are they and how have the society labeled the different generations? Okay, um, and so uh, and. And the studies say that each generation is typically defined in 15 year time brackets. Uh, 15 year time brackets, yeah. So, um, and apparently, currently, our society is made up of five different generations. And so that's, we look, we just glance through them and just to understand a little better. Um, so, those who were born before 1945, right, pre 1945, uh, are known as the builders or the tradition uh, or silent generation. Right? Th those who are born before 1945 are known as the silent generation or builders. Um, and those who are born between 1946 and 1964 are baby boomers. Uh, and then Generation X uh, are born between 1965 and 1979, Generation Y the millennials are born between 1980 and 2001 and generation z the post millennials are born between 2001 onwards okay now again the different uh, regions of the world uh, parts of the world understand millennials and these just you know there's a slight difference between a year or two but then this is like an over, overall general um, age brackets if i may say that Okay, so uh, you have the builders or the silent generation, you have baby boomers or just known as boomers, or and then generation X, generation Y, generation um, Z. Okay, so uh, and each of these different generations uh, were raised in different worlds. Okay, and that's almost like literally, I mean, think about uh, in this day and age, as we mentioned, we see change every year, you know, <laughs> We can go back to 2016 and say it's like you you know in 2016 the currency looked like this <laughs> uh but the, and then you can i mean go back all the way to the 40s 1940s uh onwards i mean you can only imagine uh you know what the world kind of looked like back then and the way people functioned okay so uh 
you know the different generations were raised uh, in a in very different environmental settings um, so the silent generations are known for the sacrifice uh, they uh, made for their families uh, right um, they sacrifice their needs um, and those for their families uh, they would sacrifice their lives uh, for the country and whatnot so these this is the generation that would have gone through the great depression in the 20s and 30s uh, and the British rule they would have witnessed the world war uh, too as well so this is the silent generation their children okay uh, the baby boomers or boomers uh, embraced the consumerism con right that is the pursuit of money and uh, all the materialistic things and the thing of excess um, okay do we have any baby boomers <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding. let's go on um, so the baby boomers generation people were born between 1946 and 1964 uh, they embraced consumerism uh, in this is in general right overarching thing uh, pursuit of money materialistic thing and it's not just and they were not satisfied with what they had they always wanted excess that is the boomer generation okay and then we look at um, so having seen the excess material goods collected by their parents that is the boomers who are now the parents uh, generation x and the millennials are more prone to focus on the quality of their lives than the quantity of their collections so now they have uh, apparently you know they see they have excess uh, you know and then they the generation is like okay uh, they prefer qu quality of their lives than the quantity of the collection so um, these vast differences can cause generations to misunderstand each other so in just three different generations we see how each think and act and react okay I hope you guys are with me so far just between these three generations or four generations we see how they think and act and how they would have done life and whatnot so just understanding the way they did life can cause misunderstanding between generations because again going back to the 40s uh, the lifespan uh, the early, you know the 1900s to again the 40s because of all the war and everything that was happening uh, the life span was said to be the average of 48 uh, and and now it's kind of doubled to uh, 78 or 80s okay and so in the previous eras uh, there were only three generations that would coexist three generations where right? you have your grandfather father and the great and, and the grandchildren kind of thing situation uh, but again the studies suggest for the first time in history uh, you know because of the life increase in lifespan and whatnot we have five generations coexisting uh, in the families in churches and communities and societies okay uh, five different generations uh, I mean we'll have to think about it uh, that is huge right because uh, every generation uh, wants to communicate something each generation wants to be heard and so this can cause uh, a lot of misunderstanding miscommunication and labeling and this and that and whatnot okay uh, are, are, are you all with me so far just following yeah okay cool right so uh, at this point in time right uh, so the ability to just uh, to understand and relate to multiple generations at one time is more crucial than ever before um, right it's very crucial for us to listen to one another because everything it nowadays is loud and when I say everything is loud I don't necessarily mean audibly but uh, it's just the it, 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 everything is huge everything is big uh, you know the billboards and the and every, all the lights and everything trying to get your attention uh, is big right so the advertisements are, are everywhere the products are everywhere the brands the number of brands and companies have increased and all of them want to be heard like from you can take from any brands from any uh, you know uh, from any sector like it could be automobile it could be uh, you know clothing 
uh, and whatnot, food and products. The, it's just, I mean, growing up, I, I'm, I think I'm, I'm sure most of us, at least in India, could relate. Uh, you know, there were, I think, maybe three famous coffee powders. Uh, you know, brand that was Brew, Sun, uh, and Kothis. Kothis. Every home had a Kothis coffee. <laughs> okay, so Brew, uh, Kothis, and uh, Kothis is actually chronologically older than Brew. <laughs> and then you have the, the latest one was Nescafe, Sunrise coffee powder. Okay. Uh, but then now, uh, I mean, you just log on to Instagram or Facebook or whatever. They're like, uh, the, I mean, the coffee culture is, uh, is, is, you know, is gone to another level. There are like so many different entrepreneurs who have gone into the coffee thing and they all want to be heard. Right? So all of these brands, all of these you know the different generations are trying to communicate constantly they want to be heard uh, everything is loud and this is the kind of day and age we are all living in because as a, the study suggested right there are five different generations for the first time are trying to coexist um, right so in all of this uh, busyness in all of this we are trying to minister to the youth of this day and age how uh, can be generation uh, Y, Z, and post millennials? Okay, generation Y, uh, Z, and the post millennials. We uh, because again, there are three. So from the teenagers to the youth to the young adults, uh, that's how we are looking at. Because uh, a youth ministry in the United States of America uh, is very different from the way it's done in at least in India. Because youth ministry in US, they target teenagers. That is youth ministry for them, between 15, 13 to 17. Uh, that is what they call as youth ministry. While as in India, our target audience starts from age 17. Age 17 can go up to the maximum of, uh, say, 28 or 30. And from, again, 28 to, say, 35 or 36 onwards are considered to be young adults. So you have teenagers youth and young adults um, again very three, three different generations between the young people itself who are trying to coexist and they all want to be heard they all have their own trends that they are going through and they all have their own passion that they want to communicate and talk about and whatnot so um, very briefly we'll try and see understand uh, who are these millennials and how can we reach out to them okay so going forward if i just use the word millennials that means i'm talking about generation um, y z and the post millennials okay uh is everybody alive all okay am i talking too fast okay okay all right so uh why why all this emphasis on the millennials right um again i'm talking about yz and post millennials uh you know all this uh, sudden hype around them uh, i mean I, honestly until i i heard this word millennial for the first time in 2017 uh there was there's this a very famous motivational speaker or a coach uh by the name called simon sinek simon sinek i'm not sure if you've heard of him uh he's pretty popular and now became famous. There was one video in 2017 that went viral. Uh, it's a video where he talks about millennials. Uh, and it, it, it was a very short video, I think for four minutes or something. And uh, so in that four minute video, which went viral across the globe, um, he just lays in on millennials, as in like, okay, millennials are this, millennials are entitled, um, they are, he calls basement dwellers, who are not content to let their best ears, uh, who are content to let their best ears slip past them. They are like this, they are like that, um, they are pampered, blah, 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 and uh, whatnot. Now, you know, I'm a kind of millennial myself. 87 born uh, you know so i i come somewhere in the some category some bracket of y z y i guess um <clears throat> so i was like hey that's not true you know that's not entirely true but uh you know but the world is right now thinking about every brand every company is constantly thinking about uh you know how can we impact them this millennial uh, because the brands and the companies don't set the trend. Uh, they look at the younger generation to see uh, what is happening, what is popular among them. And the brands follow the trend that is being set by the young people. 
Okay, so uh, it's very important that we pay attention as a, even a church uh, to those who make up the millennial generation, right? By getting to know who are they, right? You ask simple uh, questions um, like, how do they live? Uh, how do they get, get here, right? Uh, where will their path take them? Uh, what does their faith look like? Why don't they not attend church as much as the generations who have gone before? And again, the list of questions doesn't need to end there, um, but you know it can go on. You can just contextualize it to your setting. But these are some of the few questions that you need to ask yourself if you are going to minister to the youth of this day and age, because they are changing. They are constantly evolving in, in a sense that they are constantly changing socially, intellectually, emotionally, morally, and spiritually. Like, I mean, all of those five things are what makes us up as human beings, uh, right? It's like socially, intellectually, emotionally, morally, and spiritually. They are constantly uh, changing. They are constantly asking these questions like, who am I? Who are my friends? Where am I going? Uh, what am I going to do? Uh, you know, what's my role in life? What's the point of my life? Uh, you know, is, sp is spiritual uh, spirituality really important? Is religion important? Uh, is it uh, is it worth having this moral code? Uh, do I need friends? I need friends. All these things. I uh, yeah. So there is this constant change that they are experiencing. Uh, you know, on a daily basis or, or on a regular basis. And as if this wasn't enough, there is also outside influences that are shaping their values, right? From music uh, to other medias, peer groups, materialism, uh, desirable lifestyle, substance ab abuse, uh, this uh, rising cases of uh, depression and suicides. Uh, and then again, you know, we've spoken about sex with no rules. It's it's more of a recreational thing. Uh, you know, they think it. Uh, you know, anybody can do it with uh, whoever they want, whenever they want, uh, however they want. Uh, it's just another thing that can be enjoyed. Uh, you know, and so this is very prevalent than used to be in the generations before. So, uh, and what all of this has done is it's. Um, led us to observe a few trends that has in i mean all of these changes that they are experiencing has been communicated in the form of different trends that's being set by these generations okay um i've mentioned a few uh trends uh, in your notes we can just look at it so um so all these challenging influences are leading to these trends uh one is secularization Right, secularization is nothing but is simply an act, or it, it's a uh, a process uh, of making something secular or becoming secular from a from religion, a religious perspective, whatever. Right. So, in secularization, religion and the religious value associated with it disappears from culture and are replaced with government ideals and other secular institutions. Religion loses its influence over people as they embrace non-religious movements. Uh, this is one of the rising trends in this day and age. And then you have the gender revolution, uh, another trend that's uh, skyrocketing in its numbers across the world, uh, where they are not happy with just binary uh, categories, which is male and female. Uh, it's becoming more of a fluid thing or even optional right i mean it's and it's not just limited to uh you know sexual uh, thing biological thing uh every day a person can identify themselves as whatever they want to uh there's this uh, i i'm i've mentioned this before in one of the sessions um there's this new culture called the woke culture Anybody heard of it? Woke culture. Yeah, it's. Uh, it, it is. Uh, I don't know what to call it. It's. Uh, yeah. It's something else. Um, so you can identify yourself as whatever you want. Um, 
you know you can um, uh, you can identify yourself as a vegetable, any vegetable you want. You can identify yourself as a camera. You can identify yourself as an animal and go to school. You can be you can identify yourself as a lion or a cat or a wolf and whatnot. Um, and then there's this uh, rise in the pronouns that they like to be identified as. Right? So you know they entitled to call themselves that if you want to address them, you need to address them with a certain pronoun as they, the whatever. Uh, and it's and and if you look at it, uh, it's when you look at it beyond uh, its um, craziness, uh, especially with these pronouns and whatnot. Uh, um, you we look at the gospels and the demons in the Bible used to refer to themselves as they and them and you know, uh, and it's it's very very demonic. And that's what we need to keep in mind when we as we are you know just going through certain some of these trends are it's just. Um, how the enemy um, has an impact on the younger generation and trying to get a hold of them in in terms of these trend and popular topics and whatnot. So gender revolution is uh, huge um, at the moment. And another trend that is going on uh, across um, is uh, privatization. Um, it's what you know, one of the main reasons for privatization is that um, the government might be looking to improve the quality of services at a lower cost. Okay, the government is may might be looking to improve the quality of services at a lower cost, which has led to private sectors or a company or contract or co or contractors can manage to improve service quality without affecting uh, cost due to their uh, flexible policies. Uh, you know, we talk, we spoke about entrepreneurship and whatnot. So this is again another trend that is being set. And uh, pluralization, uh, you know, a plural or a plural society. I'm just um, is one where the idea of the truth is not absolute. Okay, it's a society where the idea of truth is not absolute. There is uh, there is no understanding of truth. Okay? Like you know, before you know the difference the difference between fact and a truth was understood. Like the fact can change, but truth is consistent. It's constant. That the truth will not change. Yeah, that's why we say Jesus is the truth, right? He calls himself. He is the truth because he is the same yesterday, today, and for ever, right? But uh, so in a pluralistic society, it is a society where multiple groups, uh, again with unique ideologies and values, work collaboratively to influence government policies and are active in government um, process or groups in a pluralistic society can be, um, uh, it can be determined by say culture or religion or uh, different ideologies or common ideologies and values and whatnot. Uh, now all of this, if you remember, we spoke about five different generations, right? And all of this is due to different generations wanting to be heard and that is and especially with this day's younger generation also wanted to be heard and they are pushing is causing all this trends okay and we all know about the technology revolution uh, it's like nothing else we've seen before and uh, you know everybody's talking about chat gpt and all of that <laughs> uh, yeah i mean we are heading somewhere right and and finally uh, Another trend is up uh, that is observed is hyper individualism, right? Hyper individualism uh, occurs. It, this trend is occurring when an individual need is elevated above the needs of the collective society. It's an all about me attitude that con that takes into account little consideration of others. Right. Uh, how I mean, I can give several examples, and uh, I'm again, I'm the only example that I'm I'm able to think of at the moment is um, the entitlement of uh, the say the LGBTQ community uh, who uh, put their uh, own needs above the needs of anything else. Like it's you know, if they want to be addressed a certain way, they want it to be heard a certain way. Uh, you know, they feel entitled. And that has led to hyper individualism, and that's kind of become a big group in itself. It's all about me. Like it's all about how I feel. I will wear whatever I want to because it's uh, 
you know because i feel like it who's who's the government to tell me who, who you know who's the society to tell me what to wear what not to wear uh, you know who sh who sh i should uh, you know marry and who i should sleep with etc etc right you guys following uh, so, so and all of this and it's kind of intertwined in all in between all these trends um, right are you guys with me and so i don't know about you it's a little scary <laughs> right uh, and so when we just pause and slow down just a little bit uh, when we try to drill down and look more closely at the influence of these trends uh, we begin to understand how and why the local church is also being impacted and why we need to take notice as well as action okay uh you're like okay roshan why are you talking about all these trends how is it relevant to youth ministry uh <laughs> it it is when we stop noticing um when our ministry especially in our context youth ministry becomes ineffective uh we think okay it's uh you know um, we think it has nothing to do with the church and whatnot uh, but it's very important. This is why the local church is being impacted. And it's not just that we need to take notice, but we also need to take action. It's like the challenges uh, that the youth are facing that we spoke about in the last class. Is It's not enough to know the challenges that they are facing, but it is up to us now to take uh, to you know, some measures to help them in their challenges. Okay, and Judges chapter 2, verse 10, um, talks about after that generation died another generation grew up who did not acknowledge the Lord or remember the mighty things he had done for Israel just look at that scripture after that generation died another generation grew up who did not acknowledge the Lord all that is fine or remember the mighty things now how are they supposed to remember only if it was talked to them right only if it was spoken of if something was shared you tend to remember uh, it seems like there was no proper discipleship or mentoring uh, that happened between one generation and and, and another and that uh, led to an entire generation not knowing who their God was um, so, you know, so generations are passing away, you know, one generation goes away and the other generation rises and that, that'll keep happening. That's how life has functioned. Um, and there's another study that says by 2030, by 2030, that is another, what, seven years from now? Yeah. Millennials will represent 75% of the global workforce. Uh, the question is, will they represent 75% of your church? Is it, I, I think it's an important question for us to ponder uh, and ask ourselves as um, leaders or pastors, teachers, whatnot. It's, it's a very realistic number, right? They will represent 75% uh, of the global workforce. Will they represent 75% of our church? Uh, I think it's a crucial um, thing to notice. Uh, and do you ha does anybody have any thoughts that you want to share or any? question like anything that we've spoken of about so uh, so far makes sense has made sense or you've observed somewhere you agree disagree yes pastor um, this is my IRP project uh, topic which you are taking today Okay. So I am really enjoying every bit of it and learning so much. But what I was thinking was, where did it all start? Like, what was that thing which triggered this, uh, you know, kind of trends yeah. with time? And and how many, uh, how, when, when actually it all began? Because um, if we see in the history of uh, the world, when we see the history, we see even Sodom and Gomorrah was going through 
kind of challenges. Yeah. Thousands and thousands of years back, homosexuality was prevalent even then. Right. So it's not exactly what is, you know, it's not very new to this, this particular issue. But right. apart from that, technology has changed. And uh, what I believe is that nuclearization of the families right. where, you know, children are left unmonitored in the house and both the parents go out to work and they are on their own and parents feel that to keep them engaged, yeah. the best thing is they are with the technology where they were with yeah. their grandparents, with their families around having yeah. been monitored and yeah. being taught the right thing. Immediately yeah. being corrected is very important. Yes. There and then, if they get the message that this is right and wrong, I think it helps yeah. a lot because yeah. by the time people realize things have gone out of hand, it is so yeah. difficult and they don't have time now because they are Correct. constantly into that process where you know they have to earn because yeah. they're used to that lifestyle. Yeah. The mother cannot leave the job, sit with the children and teach them the right thing to do. Yeah. yeah. So maybe I might sound being a you know Gen Y, I think so. I'm yeah. I, I may think that uh, women when they get out got out to work last maybe 100 years it's been more where you yeah. know there's uh, in the name of women's uh, liberalization or you know uh, that empowerment yeah. empowerment you know uh, where the yeah. secular teachings have come where uh, you know women have edu been educated to go out and work yeah. has impacted you know fathers were always yeah. uh, you know God had ordained them to go out and work and they were supposed to earn and prepare, right. um, provide for the family. Right. But mothers going out and then families being divided and being nuclearized has actually right. impacted this generation so much. I was thinking right. yeah. from the foundation where the change had come and why we are not able to, you know, um, impact right. the children the way uh, right. they can be uh, taught on the right track. So right. I sometimes I may sound like I'm, uh, you know, against it. No, I'm not against women working or something. But yeah. there should be a, you know, there should be a prioritization yeah. of your uh, yeah. duty where you know your children need you more than the money you need because yeah. uh, that is where uh, the whole system has changed and trends have, right. uh, you know, right. gone out of uh, everybody's control. So we cannot probably blame, blame the church for it. Yeah. Uh, church yeah. is doing its best, but uh, it's individual family uh, values that matter. Yes. Where uh, families knit into that cords of love, where elders are respected in front of the children, and children yes. know my parents are respecting the elders, and that is what yeah. I'm supposed to do. If I'm yeah. being told no, I have to take it as a no. Yeah, there's no way out, and they they cannot manipulate parents because both are not available, so they take advantage of here and there and they just <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so that's what i was uh, you know thinking about when you're teaching that's what i want to share pastor thank yeah. you so much thanks Ami. thank you yeah yeah i think it, uh, it's like this different it's like the circle uh, you know that keeps going but it just looks a little different every time it goes around um as in like, say from the the silent generation that from pre uh, 45 it, it was all about they sacrifice their needs uh you know with the desires and whatnot for, uh, and they would give up and then because of that after which they came the baby boomers who were kind of let's say uh, spoiled and you know um like they they went after uh, materialistic things and whatnot uh but if you look at the context even nowadays it's kind of in that circle but it looks just a little different so for example let's say uh in, you know as I'm sure a lot of you can relate to my kind of a, you know, raising up was uh, growing up having uh, say having food from a restaurant was a luxury. Uh, having a, a bottle of Coke at home once in two months was a luxury. It was a party. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, so, uh, but now uh, you know. I, I I can buy you know every day if I wanted to or every week if I wanted to I can and thanks to Swiggy and Zomato uh, I can order food from restaurants on a regular basis. Um, it's again 
it's there's a it's it's a different kind of uh, a, a circle but it's like but it's a similar circle you know it's same same but different kind of a thing uh but yeah as as you mentioned it also begins with the way we have we were raised as well and some of the parents that i've had conversation say that okay because i was raised a certain way because i did not have this because i was disciplined uh, constantly while growing up i am not going to discipline my child uh you know there's a difference between uh, abuse and disciplining right so you, you you see the drastic changes because i did not have anything that uh, i because i did not get anything i asked for while i was growing up as a kid i'm going to give everything that my kid is going to ask for which is fine uh, as in but to a certain extent but uh you know and the parents in this dna is I feel like there's an impulse to uh, buy everything that your kid asks for and then to just uh, calm down and ask yourself okay is this really necessary you know we're learning how to say no to our own kids is very important in this case so uh, you, you see uh, i hope you get what i'm saying but um, yeah yeah uh, anybody else want to add to uh, what's what what we've discussed so far um, Yes, Christopher, go ahead. Hi, yes, uh, thank you, Master. Uh, I was just thinking you mentioned about 75% uh, of uh, of mill millennials uh, in the workforce, and is it, I mean, what is the, I mean, the 75% that, that are in the church? I just wanted to find out in, uh, in APC church, for example, uh, do you know what is the percentage right now of uh, millennials and uh, of the whole versus, millennial uh, count? uh no christopher uh sorry i don't have the exact count at the moment yeah. uh like so we get this attendance every week uh, that our administrator sends uh, as in the number of people who attended and whatnot so there you get to see the average is about 950 from across locations uh, and then and just as just being as a youth pastor i just come out of as a youth pastor uh you know there are at least uh, uh 200 young people and so, um, uh, yeah, that is between the teenagers uh, and all the way to um, 34. Uh, so that's about, say, 200 or so out of, say, a 9, 958. That's about, I don't know, 25%, 20%, um, whatnot. So. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And uh, the other question is with regards to. Uh, you know this this woke culture uh, yeah. as i understand it's you know it has been there for some time i mean for yeah. many years it's actually sort of like it's the word woke is really coming from the word uh, awoke as in uh, you know wake up and um right. i think it stemmed from you know racial uh discrimination and social discrimination right uh, where um you know that has been there for many for many years right. but i think the the, the the sort of fundamental difference is that now people can latch on to different issues, certain you know areas, yeah. That, yeah, and then that becomes you know that becomes yes. part of the woke culture, yeah. and uh, they're very vehement about you know that uh, they yes. are right, and you know they will you know sort yes. of push it down uh, people's throat. Yes, uh, yeah. But I'm just trying to understand. I just trying to you know I guess understand from a point of view of where we are in the end times. Are there any biblical references to this kind of culture? This kind of uh, attitudes that that people have had i mean i guess uh, uh you know a lot i mean uh, yeah. high of people are there any references to that uh in in the bible specifically not like you know with exactly what we're talking about or the challenges but then i mean it just it's, it is very clear about he talks about persecution in one way but it doesn't talk about the you know the different kinds or the forms of persecution very specifically and so by looking at it all these kind of the say i mean the, the church in in the states or you know is being persecuted because of certain cultures like this and it began like you said uh you know a while ago where uh, a gay couple wanted to sue the church because the church disagreed to conduct uh, their marriage um so you you see and the church is being persecuted in its own way and so uh, this Bible doesn't specifically say, OK, this kind of thing, this, this, this is going to happen. Uh, but then uh, you identify overall and the way the church is being persecuted and say, OK, these are the end times. No doubt. Right. 
थैंक यू ओके या आई मीन फाइनली वन मोर पर्सन एनीबडी एल्स वुड लाइक टू ऐड एनीथिंग Okay. Uh, great. So um, I, just, I, I thought I think I'll pause here uh, for this session, uh, and uh, we'll resume on Wednesday where we start. We'll probably Wednesday will be our last session. Um, I think in the next session we'll kind of complete uh, the course uh, content. Yeah. Is that okay? Cool. All right. Um, awesome. Uh, thank you guys for joining in. I'll see you all around. You guys uh, take care. Okay. Bye.